Hi guys, it's Bren with Kindred Acres Homestead, and so today we're actually going to talk about two-in-one plants and why I love them so much, but in particular we're going to talk about one that I'm uh, going to be harvesting today, which is sorghum. Um, so the reason I love those two-in-one plants, for example, a uh, beet or a radish is a great example of a two-in-one plant where you get the beet root, but you also get the greens to eat while the beet root is growing. Um, so I love planting stuff like that, that you get multiple purposes and multiple uses out of it. Um, sorghum is one of those that I love to plant because of that reason. So sorghum's actually in the grain family. It grows really tall, kind of like corn. Um, and there's many different varieties of sorghum. We have two different types growing. We have the African white sorghum, and we also have the red sorghum growing. And today we're actually gonna be harvesting our African white sorghum. Some of our stalks actually got very impressive in height, uh, about 10 and a half feet, uh, which on average they say they grow between nine and 10 feet. So uh, we got lucky with some really tall st stalks here, and um, I'm gonna take you over and show you the stalks of sorghum. Uh, the stuff that's left behind we've already harvested some and so we're going to show you what that looks like and why we love the two-in-one sorghum so much and that's simply because not only do you get the grain out of it but you also get the sugar cane to process for syrups and molasses um, and the grain can be used to grind down for flour to make pancakes and waffles or you can pop it like a popping corn or you can feed your chickens with it so it's a really great high protein grain really super easy to grow and they're very tall and not bushy like so it's really not a, a big space issue um, height yes but width wise you can grow plenty of other plants below it and it's not going to take up too much room in your garden so it would be great to grow pole beans or anything type climbing type plants around it just as you would with the corn so let's go on over and take a look at the different grain heads that we've got and uh, learn how to process the the cane to make sorghum syrup and sorghum molasses okay so just to show you a little close-up of the sorghum grain I'm going to show you one first that's not quite ready um, so this grain here if you look really close it does have the grain heads but they're not quite popping open and they don't have much of that red color to it but then when you look at this one you can see more of the red color and you can see the actual hull is popping open and the grain is exposed and this is about when you want to get them. You can get a, you can let them go a little bit longer than that, but right about now is when the birds are going to start coming in and trying to take it. So um, either put some pantyhose over it, like some sort of netting or something to protect it, or you can take it like this. At this point, it's still a viable seed, and it will pop for you, and you can still grind them down like that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and harvest the ones, and then just to show you a little bit of what they look like, before they've even gotten to that stage of maturity, we've got one, let's see, right here. So that's what it looks like when they're first just getting ready to pop out. So they're just kind of bunched up in there, and it kind of looks like a corn stalk. It grows very much like corn, and they're just kind of bunched up in there, uh, and that's a very young one, not, not at all ready. So we're not going to take that one today. And um, so sorghum grows just like corn, and it's a grass and um, in the grass family, and it doesn't require a whole lot. Um, so just your basic compost. Um, it does get very tall, so maybe some support if you live in a very windy area. Uh, we've had ours kind of blow a little bit over a couple times, but. Uh, they manage to be okay, so just some, something to consider. If you pack them in closer, that would also help. We kind of spread ours apart. We had a bunch planted in here, but the chickens kind of pulled them up before um, they got to maturity, and we were out of seed, so this is all the seed we have left. So this year is really about seed saving for us. So, Okay, so today we actually have... Um, Sarah here with us, who's our work exchanger. She's come into Kindred Acres to give us a hand and to learn what she can. And so today she's actually going to go ahead and cut the sorghum down for us. And so we're just going to cut it about an inch below the base. And we'll just take the whole stock down. And for this, you're going to need some pretty big loppers. We're using just a branch cutter tool because the stalks are very thick and hard to get through. So a uh, regular pair of shears or scissors probably won't do it for you. 
about an inch above the ground. And you can just toss them on the ground there and we'll get those. Okay, we'll go ahead and continue that. Okay, so now that we have the sorghum cut down, what Sarah's gonna do now is go ahead and cut the grain head off. And we're gonna save that because we're gonna go ahead and dry those and grind them to make waffles out of them. Um, so you just wanna cut them as close to the top as possible and just store them in a bag for now. Um, later on, you can um, choose to either lay them out on, say, even a trampoline or, you know, if you have a table in your garage and you want to lay them out there. Or you can always leave a little bit more of a stem, tie them up, and just hang them to dry, depending on how many stalks of sorghum you're growing and uh, how much space you have. If you're just doing it as a hobbyist for fun, I like this year is more about the fun for us. Um, but if you're planning on doing it for actual grain to sustain you, you're going to have a lot. So the hanging method would probably be best for you. Um. Alright, so thank you. Now once you have that cut, we're going to go ahead and get ready to process the stalks for syrup. Okay, so for the next part, what we're going to do is just pull all the leaves off of the stalks and just set them aside. That can go into your compost, um, whatever you choose to do with it. You want to give a hand love? Pull the leaves off the stalks. Go for it. <laughs> So for the next part, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the stalks off into sections. So you just want to cut the knuckle out. So she's going to cut above and below the knuckle. The knuckle just gets tossed into the compost and the remaining piece goes into your stock pot. So now we have our stalks cut, knuckles out. They were um, they're boiling now in the pot. So we have just a, basically a big stock pot, and we're gonna just keep letting this boil on for now on high until it gets to a full boil, and then I'll turn it to medium, medium high. And it'll take uh, you know about an hour or two. Every now and then, what you want to do is just kind of pull one of the the pieces out and just chomp down on the end a little bit to see if it still tastes sweet. If it has any flavor at all, put it back in and just let it continue to boil until basically the stalks are flavorless. Once they're flavorless, then you'll go ahead and pull all the stalks out and just continue to on medium heat, medium to medium high, depending on your stove and your altitude, um, you will continue to boil the water down until it gets to either a syrup or if you want to go a little bit further, you can boil it down until it's a nice amber molasses. So it just depends on what your final goal is. So we're just going to go ahead and let this boil, and we'll be back to show you uh, the end results. Our 
canes for about an hour now and so I went ahead and scooped them out and I'm letting them cool off to the touch and now that they're cool enough you're just gonna come with a paring knife or you know just a knife carefully please be careful and now that they've boiled for about an hour it makes it a little bit easier so you just kind of get in there and just pull and start peeling the stalks peeling the canes and so once you get them peeled I mean you don't have to do them all but the more you do the more uh, sugar you're gonna release and that's the whole point is you want the sugar so it takes just a few minutes honestly it's not a long process to so just peel the canes pop them back into your uh, pot and just let them continue to boil a little bit longer. So it takes maybe five minutes to do the peeling process. You get kind of quick at it. And um, and you, like I said, you don't need to do them all, but the more you do, the better because you want as much of the exposed cane as possible because that's where all the flavor is and all the juice and the, the sugar. So if you could just go ahead and peel these you have a couple people in the house, put them to work. We're done boiling it and so I've already strained it so basically uh, right at the end I went ahead and pulled our leftover canes out of the pot and I got myself a little strainer and set it here and strained it out and what we're left with is a little over two cups of syrup now it's not going to be thick at this stage because it's still hot it will thicken up as it cools but we tasted it and it's delicious, it's sweet, um, perfect coloring. And now to make a molasses out of it, you would have just continued boiling this down a little bit further until it thickens to a deep, deep uh, amber color, very thick molasses. And so I'm guessing if we were to boil this down to a molasses, we'd be down to about one and a half cups or so. Um, but we wanted a syrup, so we've got a syrup here, and so this is, you know, it's a long process, but honestly, the most time-consuming part is processing the canes, but um, the rest, I mean, if you have, and I, I will add here, though, that I suggest doing this outside, because it is a long process to be boiling for that long, and it's going to raise the heat in your, the temperature in your house, and it's going to create a lot of steam. So outside is probably better. So if you could just go ahead and set an outside fire pit and do this over the fire outside, um, then really you can be doing other garden stuff while it's boiling down to your syrup. You can be planting seeds, tending your garden, whatever else you want to do. So it's not like you have to be standing over the pot the whole time. So sure, the process takes time, but really the only hands-on portion of it is mainly the beginning portion of processing the canes uh, and then from there it's just a matter of boiling it down and at the end straining it and that's really it so it's very delicious it's a fun project and you made your own sorghum syrup for your waffles and pancakes so it's just you know a little novelty thing that we like to do uh, at the end of the growing season so enjoy and I hope you guys give it a go and Leave some comments below if you've tried this method, if it worked for you, what tips you might want to add to it, and your thoughts of the delicious sorghum syrup. So thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.